if y is equal to f of x, then dy by dx uh, is equal to f dashed of x, which is a limit, as h goes to 0, of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And this is called uh, differentiating from first principles. So if we take a particular function, we're going to call f of x is equal to a to the x, i.e. like 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x. Then if we did f dashed of x using this formula up here, we're going to have a to the x plus h minus a to the x divided by h. Now this, using one of the rules of indices, will become limit as a to the x times a to the h minus a to the x over h because we have this rule a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n which is going to be equal to now a to the x is just a, uh, not part of the limit so that can actually come out so we have a to the x the limit of h goes to zero of a to the h minus one over h now if you look closely at this, and perhaps stop the video at this moment to ask yourself a question, what happens if this limit for a particular value of a is equal to 1? What does that actually mean? Okay, so this implies that there must be some value of a for which h of a minus 1 over h will be equal to 1 as h goes to 0. If we can find this value, then d dx of a to the x will be itself a to the x. So what we're saying here, if we can find a value of a, so that's when we work this limit out that it's 1, if we differentiate the original function, we in fact get itself. I.e., so if you differentiate a to the x for the, at this particular value of a, you will get the same function. Now let's have a look at this graphically. Right, so here I have a file that I created in uh, GeoGebra. Okay, we have the function f of x is equal to 1 to the x, and I've got a to the, a, a to the 1 at the moment. So I can change the function by uh, having a slider like that. So I'm changing for different values of a. Obviously, the bigger the value of a, it becomes um, more steeper. Okay, so we just go back to this. If I click this one here, it will show the gradient function. For example, the gradient function of uh, f of x is equal to 1 to the x, well, that's like the line, line y is equal to x, will be actually 0, have a 0 gradient for any value of x. Now, if I move this, then obviously the gradient function is going to change. Now, if we look at this closely, okay, you can see that the gradient function is getting actually very, very near what the actual function it is. Okay, and here we've actually gone past it. So if I just go scroll back and see if I can actually line it up. Okay, and if I, clever, if I do it to correct to two decimal places, we will find that the gradient function and the actual function will line up at approximately A is equal to 2.71. Okay, now this is a very important number, 2.71, as we shall see. So it's a screenshot of what I've just done. Okay, so what I'm saying is this is a limit as h goes to 0 of a to the h minus 1 over h. Whereas if I take now the limit when a is equal to 2.71 to the h minus 1 over h, for a very small value of h, if you calculate, you can check it, it approaches 1. Now this number is actually called the number e, where we come across it with natural logarithms. And E is about 2.71828182788. It's one of those numbers like pi, which is irrational, cannot be written as a fraction, and it's, although it looks like it's a recurring decimal, it's not. And therefore, what we're saying is, if we take the derivative of this number to the power of x, we get the same function, and that's quite an important fact. So the dx of e to the x is actually e to the x. And, and this is why it's so important.